Hello everybody, I'm Jessica River and I'm here with Brad today Hello. and we have decided to make a video about our favorite Halloween movie specials that are not so scary and put them in a tier list for you all. Kind of not so scary. Most of them are not so scary. Yeah. So, both me and Brad really like Halloween movies and specials and Non-scary ones. Non-scary ones, specifically. Um, Mostly because I'm a wimp. Jessica can handle it, but I can't. <laughs> well, neither one of us is really a big fan of horror. Um, blood and guts and all that. Um, like, I can handle it, but I don't prefer to watch it. So, um, me and him have a list that is uh, pretty much family-friendly. And we're going to be going over... Um, all of them uh, real quickly because there's a lot and we're going to be putting them in a tier list from S to D. So S is the best and then A, B, C, D. Correct? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, what do we got on here? Like 32, 33 30, or something? 32. Um, and some of them are lumped together because some of them are multiple episodes from series. Yeah, so. or they're... Um, <laughs> More Multiple like, movies of the same franchise. Yeah, so close to 40, but around 32 um, altogether. Yeah. So, starting with number one, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. And this is episode seven from season two, 1997, A River of Candy Corn Runs Through It. Now, if I remember correctly, this is the one with the talking furniture. This is right? the one with the talking furniture. Okay. This is my favorite Sabrina the Teenage Witch um, Halloween episode. I thought you were just going to say episode. No, it's not my favorite episode. But it's my favorite Halloween episode. Because okay. there are multiple Halloween episodes, and this one is the best. Um, it's just a lot of fun. Uh, she holds like a big party for everyone, and they all show up, and then there's like a band that shows up, and like there's like. A, literally a river of candy corn that like flows through. It's a pretty uh, sweet party. Thing. But yes. point of order, what is her best friend's name again? I can't remember. Well, it's funny enough because in the episode, uh, Sabrina doesn't care about Halloween, but then her best friend is like, Sabrina's gonna have this crazy awesome party that because the popular girl is having a party, and she's like, Sabrina's gonna have this crazy awesome party. It's gonna be even better than your party. Yeah. And then like Sabrina's like, well, now I have to have a party at my house. Yeah, and she doesn't want to because, like, her aunts are eccentric, but, um... Yeah. Yeah. In the end, she ends up holding a amazing party, and it's a really fun episode. Yeah. Okay, so it number two! Wait, don't we need to place that on the tier list somewhere? Oh, yeah. Shit! <laughs> okay, so, the Sabrina episode, we got a tier list for, uh, we got, uh, S-A-B-C-D. I, I would put Sabrina probably high B. Maybe... Okay, I would put her at A. I would put really? this episode at A. Yes. Okay. This is an A-tier episode for me because, number one, it's Sabrina the Teenage Witch, okay? You, you don't get much more Halloween than that, I and mean, it's a Halloween sure. episode, um, and it's a lot of fun, so I'm going to put this at A-tier. Um, Do you agree with that? All right, fine, but lower A-tier. Okay, lower A-tier. Okay. Number two, The Mummy. Oh, boy. 1999, and this is The Mummy movie with The Mummy. <laughs> no. Yes. No, it's the good one. It's the one with Brendan Fraser. It's not that Tom Cruise bullshit that came out a couple of years ago. So, we freaking love this movie. Yeah, and it's really I good. put this on here because, like, mummies are kind of Halloween y, so it's not that much of a Halloween movie, but it's a really, really good movie. Yeah. Um, I, like, it's just hilarious, and it's good for, um, it's you know, not, basically, it's like a family movie. It's a really good family movie. Pretty much anyone could watch it. Yeah, it's not the most quotable thing on the list, but it is It is still really quotable. Like uh, <laughs> This is, it does have one of the scariest scenes on our list, though. Out of all the movies, like, there is a scene in there that is pretty scary, but it's not, it's not too bad. It's, it, it's definitely not the worst thing we have on this, on this list, for sure. <laughs> It's gonna be. We're gonna get there. We're get it. We're gonna get there. It's gonna. Oh my god. So, uh, but the but one of my favorite quotes from this is, uh, if it isn't my good buddy Benny, I think I'll kill you now. <laughs> yep. Okay. So where's the mummy going? Uh, I I would put if, if Sabrina's an A, mummy has to be an A. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say A tier for the mummy. Yep. I put it above Sabrina. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. 
Sabrina's so more Halloween, but still, like, The Mummy's just such a good movie. Okay. Number three, we have Goosebumps, The Haunted Mask. This is oh, season God. one, episode one and two from 1996. I was, I, this is not the scary thing I was referring to, but if we're specifically talking about the mask episode of Goosebumps, this is terrifying. Why is this on here? <laughs> so this list is like avoiding gore movies, basically. Anything like over, um, like nothing rated R is on this list. But um, some of these things are more on the scary side yeah. for Halloween. So, the, like, I'd say family-friendly, but not for toddlers. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, 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 not, no, definitely not. Not young children, but, um, like, family yeah. stuff. Um, can, can I give a synopsis on this episode of Goosebumps? Okay, go ahead. Okay, so you know that really fun movie with Jim Carrey where he gets the crazy mask and he puts it on, everything's wacky and fun and zany, and it's like, whoa, Jim Carrey, and he's all like, somebody stop me! Picture that, but it's a child, the mask is horrifying, he can, the child can never take it off, and it, like, turns them into a monster. Yep. Yeah. And yep. it's it's not funny, it's just scary. Yep. It, I mean, I loved this as a kid. Like, it scared me real bad, it scared all my friends, yeah. but, um, as a teenage kid, like, I loved it. Um, B tier for me. What about you? I'd put it in C. Really? Personally. This gave me like an aversion to it's, rubber masks because I was every time I saw a rubber mask in the store for a while, I was I just like, no. I think a lot no. of kids had that fear when, yeah. after the, seeing this. Um, low B. Low B. All right. Low B. Okay. Too. Next is number four, the Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh my God. S tier. S tier. Before we even before talk we even about it, let's just get out of the it's, way. It's number one. It's, it's upper always, S tier. It's always number it's one. It's the greatest Halloween movie. Okay, it's this, It's a, for me it's a really close tie, or not, maybe not tie, but it's really close between this and another one that we'll talk about in a little bit. But Nightmare Before Christmas is like the undeniable quintessential, like, God tier Halloween movie. Yep. And don't, don't at me. Just it's so it's the best. It's skeletons, ghosts, pumpkins, you name it. The entire opening song is basically anything you could think to associate Halloween with in one song. Yep. And it's it's incredible. The claymation it still holds up today. It's it's like Oh, I still rewatch it every year. Yeah. It's same. the one movie that I will rewatch for Halloween. It's it's, really it's crazy. Alright. Number five. Uh, Scary Godmother. 1997. Not a lot of people actually know about this. I yeah. think I think well, this I think one... it's gotten more traction since it's been on the internet. I mean, maybe, but um... it's on YouTube. I'm pretty sure. So I think a lot of kids have watched it at some point. True. This one is actually like I found this on Cartoon Network. I think I introduced you to this, right? Yes, yeah, you did. Yeah, I found, I watched it on Cartoon Network years ago, and I was like, that's kind of interesting. They actually had two of them. There was, uh, and it was funny because they. Uh, they had one one year, and then the next year they showed the original and the sequel. So it, it I mean, it did well enough for them to animate the second one, and I think it's, it's I want to say it's based on a book, like a kid's book or something? Probably. I could be wrong. The but, animation is not that good, yeah, no. but it's got a, a cute it's, story. It's and got charm. It's, it's charming, yeah. Yeah, it's nice. It's charming. It's great. It's like, it's essentially the... It, it, like it's it, it encompasses the exact feeling of the list because we're trying to do a not so despite all the scary things we have <laughs> we're trying to do a not so scary list, um, and and scary godmother is exactly that it is a bunch yeah. of things that could be taken as scary brought together for a Halloween party, and all of these like uh, basically the scary godmother shows that things aren't as scary as they seem yeah and even if they are sometimes being scared is fun yep. So, where do we put this one? Um, I would put this upper B. Agreed. Yeah. Alright. Alright, number six. Donald Duck Cartoons Trick or Treat 1952. Alright, you're now, gonna this take... This one is one that I put on there that I really like. Um, it's a old cartoon of uh, Huey, Dewey, and Louie and Donald Duck. And Huey, Dewey, and Louie go trick-or-treating, and they knock on their uncle Donald Duck's door. And Donald decides to uh, play a trick on them instead of giving them treats. And a witch sees what Donald Duck does. And so um, the witch and Huey, Dewey, and Louie decide to get back at Donald Duck for playing a trick on them. 
So the witch plays a trick on uh, Donald Duck instead. And I think it's super cute. It's actually pretty good animation for... Um, 1950 so <laughs> Yeah. Good lord. So, um, yeah, it's cute. Um, and I love how the older cartoons, they really know how to animate inanimate objects. And you'll really see that in uh, this particular video, how they're able to um, just kind of make things come alive. Um, but yeah, it's super cute. If you come across it, I definitely recommend watching it. And I would put it um, probably middle B tier. Um, below Scary Godmother? Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Number seven, The Little Vampire. Yeah, this one we're pretty split on. I don't like it. I like it. <laughs> it's so, it's just like, it's got the kid from Stuart Little, and he's even younger, <laughs> and he's just kind of annoying, and he's like, oh, I found a vampire friend. And he's I like, I thought it was cute as a kid. Uh, like, they get to fly around, and then the, um,. The vampire... There are vampire cows? There are vampire cows that <laughs> shit on the vampire hunter's truck. Yeah. Like, it's so... I know. It was just funny to me as a kid, okay? It's... I, I can't... That was cute. There are plenty of things I thought were funny as okay. a kid that I look at now, and I'm like, that was pretty <laughs> dumb. Um, I mean, I admit it's dumb, but I liked it as a kid. Uh, what? Uh, there was... I don't know. It just... Uh, it just bores me. I don't like it. Okay, well, where are we putting it then? I mean, you like it. I would put it on C tier, honestly. Okay, you can put it on C. Actually, tier. no, I don't. Don't I, put it on D. I'll put it on C. I might even. I I would go upper D, but I'll put it on lower I'll put C. It on C. Okay. Uh, what's next? Okay, so number eight, Paranorman twenty twelve. This is one that I actually wanted on here. We rewatched this recently, and uh, this one is. This is I another one we're torn okay. on. I think. It's to me this one is boring. Here's the thing: I don't think Paranorm. On rewatching it, I don't think Paranorm is actually that great, but I enjoy it. Um, there are just moments where I think it's really nice, but at the same time, it's very bare bones. It's very like. You I know, wish they did more with the ghosts. Yeah, there. Um, it just kind of focuses on the random witch at the end, and well, not. I wouldn't even say that know. much. It's very like. It's, it's about Norman being ignored the whole time and basically being like, the whole message of the movie is like, Norman's actually really cool. And it kind of seems like the lonely kid's like right. uh, dream to be like, oh, I can talk to ghosts, but nobody likes me. And then I, everybody realizes that I was right the whole time and is now nice to me. And it's like, yeah. it's got that feel, but um, I don't know. There are moments where... I can't really, I, I don't know, I can't really say it's, like, a great movie, but uh, there are moments that I enjoy of it. Uh, I would watch so, it once. Yeah. Um, C or B? Um, I would say lower B. Okay. Like Lower B tier. Moving on, number nine is... Who's Heffalump Halloween movie, 2005? Here's the thing. I don't think I've actually seen this, okay. but I've seen like an older Winnie the Pooh Halloween thing. So, the Pooh's Heffalump Halloween movie is actually a combination of a couple of different uh, clips from Winnie the Pooh that are Halloween related. So the one that you have seen is in there. Okay, I like if I I mean I it's remember like, liking that one. I just don't remember what happens in it. <laughs> it's okay. So. Um, basically this is, um, this movie came out, like, right after the Heffalump movie, and it's a Winnie the Pooh Halloween special. Like a mashup. With, yeah, it's a mashup, and then it's, like, it's got the old, uh, Winnie the Pooh movie, uh, Halloween specials in there as well. Um, essentially, um, I'm trying to remember what happens. It, I haven't watched this since last year, but, um, I remember, like, they're trying to to go trick-or-treating, or they're about to go trick-or-treating, and I can't remember why, but something stops them, or like they get scared or something, and then uh, they tell stories of the old Winnie the Pooh characters, so, and that's how they go back into like flashbacks uh, of like the old, the older episodes, and I just, I just remember it being really cute, and um, if you do have kids, then I would definitely recommend this one, um, even for like younger kids, like this is a really yeah. good movie. 
Um, I remember the Heffalump stuff being really cute. Oh yeah, Lumpy is adorable. Yeah. <laughs> and so is Rue, so yeah. Um, for me, this is B tier. Upper B? Upper B, yeah. Pro- above Scary Godmother? Um, yes. All right. I put this above Scary I'll, I'll give you that. It's really cute. All right, uh, next one. Okay, number 10. SpongeBob SquarePants, and we have two episodes for this one. We have The Legend of, uh, of Bikini Bottom, uh, and this is that's from season 11, episode 5, 2017. And then we have um, Scaredy Pants, which is season 1, episode 13, 1999. So these are really far apart from each other. But I love both of these Spongebob specials. I actually don't remember the Scary Pants one as much. Okay, the Scary Pants one is something I don't really want to spoil, but... I th- is it the one... Where, don't, don't spoil it. I'm if not going to say if what... you think no, you no, know what it is... Is it the one it. where he has... He's a ghost. Okay, yeah, I, 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 know, okay. I, know, I, know, I know, I know. Okay. Okay, I remember. I don't want... If anyone has not seen that... I don't want to spoil that, but that is the one where he is a he dresses up as a ghost yes. for Halloween. Yes. Um, I'm not going to go too much into that one, but I will go into the 2017 one, which is the legend of oh, it's Bukini Bottom, uh, a Bukini Bottom, and this is a stop motion uh, SpongeBob SquarePants episode. Yeah, that's something that's actually crazy because at a certain point, you know, the the normal thing is with all the SpongeBob fans was like, oh yeah, no, after season whatever, it was trash. Mm-hmm. And I agree with that wholeheartedly, but there is this one Halloween episode that I saw, thanks to Jessica, yep. that's actually, like, decent. Yep. It's a really cool episode. I love what they do at the stop motion in this. It's very creative. It's really fun. Um, it's essentially, um, Spongebob is scared to go out for Halloween, and then Patrick convinces him that scary equals funny, and oh my God. Uh, chaos ensues, essentially. Yeah. So, and then... Definitely uh, really fun. I, I love both of these episodes. Um, they're put together on this list, so where are we putting them? Um, I'm going to say A. You're going to go as high as A? Mm-hmm. All right, love, but it's behind Sabrina. Them. That's fine. But yeah, I love both of these. It, um, SpongeBob is just always fun. Yeah, SpongeBob right. is pretty fun. Number 11, Charlie Brown, The Great Pumpkin, 1959. Okay, so... It's a classic. It's a classic. You just have to watch it. You You have to to see it. It's Charlie effing Brown and The Great Pumpkin. And it's like, everyone has seen it. It's, It's the... It's like one of the Halloween things. But it's... Not a lot happens. Nope, not a lot happens. It's older, but, um... It's just a tradition... It kind of is, but I don't want to. I don't want to rate it really high just because it's a d- tradition. Right. But like, like I remember one of the kids is obsessed with the gray pumpkin and wants to see him and brings one of the other kids to the pumpkin patch and is like, "We're gonna see the gray pumpkin." And I don't. I hardly remember what happens. <laughs> I like. I I couldn't even tell you. Um, but I even remember. if I could, I probably didn't wouldn't want to spoil it in case you haven't seen it. Mm-hmm. If you're a younger kid watching this, go watch Charlie Brown and the Gray Pumpkin. Tradition. Tradition. All right, um, so where's tradition going? Where does tradition get placed on this list? Uh, uh, B? Pff, yeah, pro- I would put it... Um, we have a lot in B. <laughs> yeah, we are. B is so well, middle of the, the road. Middle, it's, yeah, it's the middle. Um, I would put it... Well, we could do upper C. I don't think I'd rate it that low. Yeah, okay. How about middle B? Yeah, I think it's... Um, I I would put it right above Paranorman. Okay. Um, yeah. Tradition. <laughs> Tradition. <laughs> okay. Uh, next is number 12, Hotel Transylvania uh, 2012. Oh my god. Okay. Do you want to start okay. with this one? I like the first um, of the Hotel Transylvania series. I think that the animation in this was really good. Um... And I thought it was a lot of fun. Okay. I agree with most of that. But I, at the same time, it's really weird to, like, go back and watch. Because I've... Originally, when I first saw it, I was like, this is actually pretty good. Even though Adam Sandler's in it. But uh, then you realize 
it's not just Adam Sandler, it's Kevin Smith and David Spade and Rob Schneider. And, like, it's essentially the cast of grown-ups in an animated movie about monsters. And they don't really act much differently than they do in Grown Ups. And for anybody who hasn't seen Grown Ups, don't! It's a terrible movie. But Hotel Transylvania is, like, not horrible. But at the same time, I don't... So you're biased, basically. I'm a little biased, but at the same time, like, going back and watching the first movie, I notice a lot of, like, really dumb, childish jokes in it um, that I didn't notice the first time. And it's it's it's, kids. Yeah. And we didn't have that we didn't have high expectations for this going in. And so our sure. expectations um were low and because of that like it Our expectations like- were low and then they got met. No. I, I would say it was higher for I I, I thought it, it turned out better for me than yeah. I thought it would. Um, uh, I expected it to be a lot worse, but no, the animation in it is actually really good. Oh yeah, the animation's like, great. It. Like I don't Some I don't deny that. The stuff they were doing with that movie it was really good and i thought it was fun and entertaining um how about c i guess uh upper c yeah it's a it's definitely above little vampire for me uh oh there it is okay not the best not the worst yeah okay i don't hate it oh and i i would not recommend the other movies they're just not as good the second one is okay but um the third is definitely not good at all i haven't seen the third probably not good. all right number 13 Boy Meets World, and then there was Sean, season 5, episode 17, 1998. Okay, I vaguely remember this, but what I remember from it is very good. The thing mm-hmm. is, it's actually, like, it's it's probably one of the scarier ones, but not, like, super... It's scary at first, I would say. They're basically making fun of the traditional horror. Oh, absolutely. I think there's a South Park reference you mentioned in there as well. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> which is hilarious. They, ba- I think... If I remember correctly, they went, they got a lot of creative freedom on this episode. Um, I want to say I've seen, like, the cast talk about this and how they loved making it, because they just got to go crazy. <laughs> um, but also, um, uh, Eric, uh, Eric, oh, I don't remember his name. I feel so stupid. Um, oh. What, his friend? No, Eric's actor's name. Oh, I don't know his name. Um. Oh my god. Anyway, that dude. Put it can you put it in the video? Sure. That dude. That guy. He uh there's a scene because they have a random guest star in the like in the uh in the episode and she's I think she's been in like scary movies or something or she's just meant to play like a tropey role of the girl who always screams and that's just what she does like the whole episode <laughs> just scream and then I think her and uh, Angela, like... They have, like, a screaming yes, they're, they're like, I'm the screaming one, and something like... It's it's or just... It's like, she's like, she screams too, and she's like, yeah, I can scream too, or yeah, something. Yeah, it's hilarious and amazing, and there's some great in-jokes in there, and then, uh... There's... It's just... It's just great. It's spooky fun. Yeah. It's good. Alright, where are we putting it? Uh... We'll put it with Sabrina? Yes. Above or below Sabrina? I think it's below. Okay. I think it's right below Sabrina. Okay. So A tier below Sabrina. Yes. Above SpongeBob. Above SpongeBob. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we are on. Okay. Number 14. Wallace and Gromit, The Curse of the Were Rabbit, 2005. We actually watched this very recently. I, I didn't remember anything about this, so we had to rewatch it. Yeah. Um, I just remembered that it was. Um, I remember it being entertaining when, when I first saw it. I would say, yeah, it's uh, that held up a little bit. It's mm-hmm. it's definitely. Uh, it's not the best. It's not the worst. Again. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's entertaining. I like it. Um, I the stop motion is really good. It has. I think if I. If I had to sum it up in a sentence, I would say it has a lot of character. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's just, it's charming, it has a lot of character, and it's 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 a good movie, but I wouldn't say it's a great movie. Yeah. It's kind of a spin on um, werewolves, and it's a spin on, like, Frankenstein. Yeah, picture, like, a scary werewolf movie, and then make it, like... For kids, and it's yep. and it's not. This is not a, even remotely scary. There's nothing scary in this movie. 
Um, and it's just That's all around. That's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's visually very entertaining. Yeah, it's it's interesting how the sort of... The stop motion like just interacts with everything. Yes. is really good. Um, okay. I would put this one in A as well, but I think I'd put it um, lower A. Actually, lower A or upper B? Yeah. For, uh, yeah, I think lower A. I agree with that. Uh, where is... Okay. Number 15. Ichabod Crane, 1949. Okay, so... This is, this is a really old one, for sure. But here's, here's my thing with this one. This is supposed to be a not scary thing? <laughs> Ichabod Crane is terror. Like this, this sh it's it's not even a movie. It's like an episode, but even maybe not that long. But um, I want to just point out that the tension that this thing builds is insane. By <laughs> at the, the time, end, at the end, yeah, no. By the time you get to where the thing is going, you're already like sweating bullets. <laughs> yeah, um, the beginning is not scary at all. No. The beginning is just kind of like, oh, la -di da we are in the village and, you know, walking around and, oh, I'm the new school teacher and I, you know, discipline the children and then send them home and then, oh, I like this girl and then, oh, this other dude likes this girl and, oh, this dude is uh, now telling me a scary story of the Headless Horseman. <laughs> and, oh. Don't give all of it away. Okay. But, yeah. Okay. Uh... But, that's yeah, I'm not going to give all of it away. But that's essentially the story. Um, it, it is the story of the Headless Horseman, essentially. And uh, I love this. I love this one because this is like a Disney classic. This was um, one of their original cartoons. Uh, it's terrifying. It is. It does show its age, though. Yeah. It, it definitely shows yep. its age. It's quirky. Um, if that wasn't the case, I would probably put it at S tier, but because it does have, like, some controversy around it, I'm not going to say yeah. where it to go there, but, um, the, the Headless Horseman part is just, ooh, it's just, it's the best Halloween stuff right yeah. there. Um, where to put this? Um, I actually... What controversy is in it? I don't actually remember. It's not... It's just... It's mainly the girl. It's just a bit... Oh, is it like... I don't know. Really... Okay, I think I know what you mean. It's not that controversial compared to a lot of other old Disney yeah. stuff. But it's just... You could tell it just has not aged well okay. in certain parts. So... Um, um, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say B for this. B? We're going that high? I mean, that, 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 that end scene. I was gonna put like lower B. Uh, All right, or, uh, or above goosebumps or below goosebumps? Because it's not above <laughs> paranormal. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Uh, all right. How about? Okay, yeah, we can put. How about upper C? We don't have enough in C, so let's put. Okay, C. all right. Upper C. Yeah. Uh, it's such a, it's got such good animation, but that's just the one thing that kind of ruins it. Yeah. All right. So moving on, number sixteen, we have another uh, two part, two episodes. So this is Batman the Animated Series, Ooh. and we have Moon of the Wolf from season one, episode thirty six, nineteen ninety two, and then we have Almost Got Him. Season 1, episode 46, 1992. Okay, before we talk about these at all, yes. we cannot talk about the ending of Almost Got Him. That is a... <laughs> go, like... Yeah, no, we can't It's It's 20-some-odd minutes. Just go find it and watch it. And we're not going <laughs> to spoil it. We're, we'll t Okay, what, the premise of the episode is a bunch of villains just hanging out, talking about how they almost got Batman. There's a little bit of Halloween themes in it, um, but not a, a lot but it is considered a Halloween episode. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think it is a really... It's, it holds up as a very good episode. I agree. The other episode, we actually found out about very... Re like, extremely recently. 
like yeah, today. I rewatched it, but I don't know if you had seen it. Anymore. I don't think I. I mean, maybe when I was a kid, right. but I didn't know about it. The wolf one. So yeah, the moon, uh, moon of the wolf. Um, it's basically like a werewolf Batman story. It, yeah, it's, it's it's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. It is. It's actually just. It's just. What if Batman fought a werewolf? And that's the, <laughs> that's the premise of the episode, and it's great. And then Almost Gotham is like what Brad said, all of the villains ter- uh, telling their story of how they almost got Batman. Yeah. It's, it's really good. It's really good. The ending of that was also amazing. Yes. So definitely recommend both of these, and I'm going to say A for this one. What about you? I would go as high as S. I'm not but if we're, to put this in S. If we're going to put it in A, I want it to be upper A. That's fine. Um, it's definitely, I think it's above Sabrina. Am I wrong? I think you're wrong. <sighs> is it above Boy Meets World, though? Hmm. I think it's above Boy Meets World, at least, right? I don't think so. Are you kidding? <laughs> How is Boy Meets World, like... I think Boy Meets World is more entertaining. <sighs> you, I mean, you and me are Batman fans. Yeah, we are! <laughs> That's why, like, I think it's really good, but if you're gonna recommend it to other people, I'm gonna say it's it's like lower A. Oh my god. You're killing me. <laughs> Below Boy Meets World? Yeah. I just think you don't want to break up Boy Meets World and Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Kinda. Alright, fine. It's right below Boy Meets World. Thank you. Criminal. Criminal. <laughs> God. Batman's gonna bust in here for putting it, <laughs> take us to jail for putting it that low on the list. Wow. Oh my god. All right, number seventeen, Coco, two thousand seventeen. So this one, I think we were unsure if we were gonna put on there because it is based on Dia de los Muertos, not necessarily Halloween. Um, oh, but it's. it's I think it, it's got. The it happens on the Day of the Dead, but it's not really about the Day of the Dead. It's more about family. Yeah, that's the overarching theme. Yeah. The Day of the Dead just kind of ties the theme together really well. Yep. Um, um, but it's a good movie. Yeah, it's, it's pop. Really it's movie. really popular, and uh, yeah, like I don't, I don't think it's like unusual for people to be bawling their eyes out by the end of this mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. I think I've I, I think I've watched it all the way through twice and both times I have just like lost it at the end. Mm-hmm. It's very sad. But or, it's sad, it's but it's sweet. also really fun. Yeah. It's fun, sweet, and sad. It is fun, sweet, and sad. It's a good movie, you know. It's it's mostly on here because like this is not the one we're gonna have to explain very hard. There are a couple <laughs> of these where you're gonna be like, Why the hell is this on here? Um but uh but I, I like it. I mean, it's obvious. It was it was a Pixar Disney type movie. It was well made. Had a bunch of money behind it. The story the story is incredibly predictable, but at the same time, it's like it's fun. Yeah, I remember playing it. <laughs> uh, uh, upper B, I would say. Okay, I agree with that. Yeah, I'll put it like like top only, of B. And we're only doing that because it's just not. It it doesn't focus that much on the yeah. It's it's Halloween one of the theme. lesser Halloween. Is we have on Yeah. But it happens on the Day of the Dead. Yes. So, yeah. Okay, so, number 18. Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl, 2003. I think this one doesn't require as much explanation. Well. But it does, <laughs> like. Basically, it's a really cool pirate movie, and a lot of people dress up as pirates for Halloween. Yeah. So, well, there not, you even go. Just, not even just that. The whole curse like, yeah, and it's it's got ghosts in it. I wanna I wanna explain this curse. I want to I wanna just layer this out and explain why it's on here. Okay. In this movie, there is, and I everybody's probably seen this, so I'm just, this is probably just a moot point. There are pirates who stole gold because you know pirates, and whenever they step into moonlight, they become undead. Yep. And that it's like, I I love that. Yeah. Um, I don't even remember. Because there's the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. I don't even remember that being remotely a thing in the ride. No. They were just like, let's just put this in the movie. And I think it worked. Yeah, it does. It's it was, really cool. It was very it's nice. Very, it's the most pirate uh, movie out of all of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Question, are you putting in clips, just like little snippets from the movies into this I video? Might. Because there's a clip from Hot Pirates I'd love. Okay, what do you want? 
the part where like Barbosa is like, "You best start <laughs> believing in <laughs> ghost stories, stories Miss Turner. Turner. You're in <laughs> one." <laughs> Okay. Oh, it's so good. All right, oh, I going? love this movie. Where's it going? I want to say S. <laughs> I really want to say S. It's, it's got to go in A. Oh. It's not that much of a Halloween okay, movie. Okay, fine, but it's a it's top of A. Top A, okay. All right, what's... what? Are, it's the mummy. Okay, all right, yeah, it's okay. above the mummy. Okay, above the mummy. Okay, there you go. Top of A tier. All right. Number 19, The Black Cauldron. 1985. You're going to have to talk more on this one, because I okay. I think I've seen this maybe once. So this was made when Disney was just getting into like the medieval stuff, um, and just like a lot of, uh, a lot of people were doing like, uh, like 1980s medieval things, like yeah. it was like the space age. It was the, the Dungeons medieval. and Dragons renaissance. Yeah. Not, well, not even renaissance, the like... Everybody's like, oh, this is a thing, and fantasy, and woo, and Tolkien, yep. and... Yep. Yeah. That's pretty much the age that this came out in, and it was a Disney flop when it came out, um, but I love this movie. I think it's really cool. It is pretty scary at parts. It is yeah, a lot... The... It's, it's one of the darkest Disney movies ever made. What's the guy's name? The Skull King the or Skull something? The Skull King, yes. So, um, the Black cauldron is basically like a doomsday device and the the horn no it's the horned king oh yeah wants the black cauldron to bring an army of undead back to life to <sighs> basically help him take over Jeez. everything it's a DD campaign um, if i've ever heard it there are witches in it there's a princess in it um there's a bard in it like it's yeah, uh, it, it's yeah, it's just a scary medieval um, Disney movie, and I personally really enjoy it. But it is, it's pretty dark. Um, so, yeah, there's, a, yeah. there's no spoilers, but there is a scene that uh, everybody I think remembers in that movie that I have. Like, I don't even remember the scene, but I've heard people talk about uh, it constantly. Yeah, yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so for me, hmm, I'm gonna put this. Right behind Ichabod in C tier. Really? What? Yeah. That low? Yeah. Wow. Because it, it, I like this movie, but there's a reason why it bombed. Uh, it is kind of slow. Um, you said behind the, Ichabod. Yes. Right? Okay. The main character isn't that likable, unfortunately, uh, and it takes a while to get the plot going. But otherwise, I really enjoy it. Okay. Okay. So, next. Number 20. This is one that I really like. It's Sherlock Holmes and the Hound of the Baskervilles, 1939. Gosh, so we're... this is old shit. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of this stuff is old because um, I just love watching old things. Um, it's just fun for me to see how, how far cinema has come, but... Um, this is a really good movie. Um, I like this a lot better than the Sherlock Holmes that came out, like the television show. Oh series. yeah, Sherlock. Sherlock, yeah. I oh, like. God. I love this so much more than that. Oh I my mean, god. <laughs> let's let's not get it twisted. That the Sherlock, the new Sherlock, it, like it started off and it was like, oh cool, and then at, the more it went on, people, I think the general opinion of it was like it dropped off. But um, so. But this yeah. one, I've, I mean, this old, I don't know much about it, but... <laughs> it To me, it's good. So, The Hound of the Baskervilles is one of the signature stories yeah. of Sherlock. I want to um, say... I mean, I, I'm probably talking out of my ass, but I feel like that's one that they do in every yes, version yeah, of Sherlock. Pretty much, yeah. It's, it's one of the ones that is constantly uh, remade. And this one that I put on here... Because I had to put on a Sherlock Holmes um, something, <laughs> so I decided to put this one on because it's my favorite, and it's from 1939. Um, so if you can find this, I definitely recommend it. And I'm gonna put this B tier. B tier. Where in yeah. B tier? Mm, behind Charlie. No. Okay, you like Paranormal. Okay. Before the mask. Number 21, 
Corpse Bride 2005. So here's the thing about Corpse Bride. It <laughs> competes with The Nightmare Before Christmas. And I... it falls hard. Yeah. No, I was about to say, if you are about to tell me that Corpse Bride is even close to Nightmare no, Before Christmas. No, that's its problem. Is that it, That's what it has to compare itself to. Because it's made, um, like it's produced by... Uh, Tim Burton. Tim Burton, and everyone associates Nightmare Before Christmas with Tim Burton, and then this was an, another stop motion Tim Burton film. Mm-hmm. Well, so everyone thought it was going to be like the next Nightmare Before Christmas, and it just it just can't compete with the Nightmare Before Christmas. Now, um, the Nightmare Before Christmas was produced by Burton, like he funded yeah. it, but then the director was what was the director's name? Henry Selleck. Okay, that's he did important to know. Well. Okay, okay, yeah. I don't know if he had anything to do with Corpse Bride, though. I can't um, remember. Yeah, I, I have no idea. But anyways, Corpse Bride, um, it's got a couple of songs that I like. And I like the bride herself, but all the other characters are bland and boring, and you just don't care about them. And the story is slow, Yeah. and the visuals aren't that great until you like go to like the um, other realm, essentially. Then it gets a little bit colorful, but like even then, it's just... It's just boring. It's just yeah. altogether boring. I think I um, agree with most of that. I would watch it once, and then I wouldn't bother again. I remember there being a twist in the movie that comes later, <laughs> and every time yeah, I've it's... seen this, I just don't care. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like, but this happened, and I'm like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, like I said, it just falls short compared to Nightmare. Oh, yeah. Um... This is gotta go in C, right? Yeah, I was gonna. Are we putting this in D? D. It's gonna be a D. I want one D. We have to have one D on this list. What? We gotta have one. If if we're already the lowest thing right now is Little Vampire. Is Corpse Bride worse than Little Vampire? Shoot. D tier. D tier. Okay, do it. Yeah. If we can, okay, I will move Corpse Bride up to C if we can find something. That we haven't gotten to yet. That's worse than Corpse Bride. Okay. Okay. All right. Number twenty-two. Hocus Pocus, nineteen ninety-three. Oh my God. Okay. Well, that's not gonna be it. That's not gonna be more. Oh my God. Like, okay. First off. First off. First thing. S tier. S tier. Triple S tier. Quadruple S tier. Ultimate mega S tier. Like, holy shit. I can't. I can't enough. I can't enough. I don't even. I, the list is broken because Hocus Pocus <laughs> is so good, it doesn't even let me put it on. Like, it, it only wants me to put it above Nightmare, but like, I, okay, hold on. Okay. It's gotta be behind Nightmare. <sighs> I know, like, I love both these movies so much. This is, when we were talking about Nightmare, this is the contested one that I have, because I wrestle with this so much. I love both of these movies to just at a crazy extent, and it's, they're both so good, and I, like, I want... I, it's so hard for me to decide which one of these I like more. And I, do, I can't. I can't. It's like choosing between children. It's not like that. Don't take that out of context. <laughs> That's a horrible analogy. Oh my god. No, but they're both amazing movies. Children. <laughs> <laughs> I smell children. And what wouldst thou call that? A child? <laughs> That's the thing with Corp... Or not with Corp... Oh my god, not Corpse Strike. Fuck Corpse Strike. We're not talking about that anymore. With Hocus Pocus, the thing is that it is so quotable. It is one of the most quotable movies I think I've ever seen in my life. Toad Yes! Oh my god. Uh, the... Uh, the... I think... Okay, you're... We're, you just... You just gotta put in the clip, right? You're just gonna put in the clip. Yep. You're just gonna put in the clip. Here's... Yep. Here's the greatest quote... Of the entire, of, of probably all ever. of cinema. <laughs> all of cinema. This is one of the greatest quotes of all time. This is ice. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Oh, can I just, yeah. can we just rattle on some, okay, you put the clip in. Oh. I just want to rattle on other quotes. Okay, well, just do it quickly because we got to move on. Okay, do you want to go first or am go. I, okay. Just go. Uh, oh, what was it? Uh, what did you call them again, Max? <laughs> Yahoo's! <laughs> Max says you have nice Yahoo's! <laughs> Wait, can you... Okay, I know I'm asking a lot. 
when when when, oh when Addison is at the top of the stairs, can you please just put in the thing she does? Because so she's like Max Dennison, and she's just like. Oh my god! It's just. Oh my god! You can. Nineties. It's so nineties, and it's so good, and it's so many like things. Ah, oh, it's all. It's just so like quirky and <sighs> hilarious and. Oh it's God. witches. It's it's, it's like witches. it's like there are some movies that you get where you the villain holds up the movie and you can tell they're having so much fun with it and corpse. Oh my God! And Hocus Pocus <laughs> is one of those movies. Corpse Bride, get out of my brain. Um, yeah, corpse Bride is so now. bad that it's infecting my like my brain. Okay. Hocus Moving Pocus on. is amazing. S tier. Number twenty three. Coraline, two thousand nine. I don't know if I've seen. Coraline. I don't think I have actually. Really? That yeah. is surprising. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I think I know, this too. is actually a movie that you would like. Really? Uh, per for me personally, it's okay. Um, I would put it above Paranorman, but um, it's not. I don't know. It just. It it would it was another Henry Selleck film, but uh, I don't know. It just didn't re resonate with me for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people really love this movie. It is a lot of fun. The visuals are really good. Um, I don't know. Uh, I know two things about Coraline. What? It has a very creepy undertone, and mm -hmm. people have buttons for eyes. <laughs> yep. That's that's about all I all I know. It's been a while since I've seen it. Um, I mainly put it on here because I know a lot of people like it. Uh, but personally, it's just not really one that I care that much about. Yeah, I, I I need to watch it, honestly, so I don't really know where to put it. I would put it right above Paranorman. What? I would say it's better than Paranorman, but <laughs> it's just for its visuals and its story is is better than it. Uh, just to just to sum that up, so Coraline is better than Corpse Bride, Little Vampire, Postal Transylvania, The, ba the Black Cauldron, Ichabod Crane, Goosebumps and Sherlock Holmes and wait, is it better than Paranorman or? Yes. Okay. All right. Yes, I would agree with all of that. Wow. Yes. I mean, I I, really I, I do to watch think this. you should see it. I think everyone yeah. should see it once. Um, it's got some really interesting um, twists in it, and um, it's visually very very appealing. I I guess I just don't like the characters that much, mm. so I don't really connect with it. Alright. Moving on to number 24, Mickey's House of Villains, 2002. This is one of the TV specials. So this is a TV special that was a, I think it was a direct-to-DVD spe special or direct-to-VHS or something. No, right. it, 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 it surely aired on TV yeah. at some point. Yes, it did. Um, but basically, it is a kind of like a spinoff from uh, Mickey's House of Mouse, but instead the villains take over the House of Mouse, and yes. basically it's shenanigans with the villains, and um, I just, I love this because it's so fun to watch all the Disney characters interact with each other, yeah. especially the villains. Yes! It's really, because the whole concept of House of Mouse was a really... I don't know how well it was executed. I don't remember it holding up Not super that well. Yeah, but <laughs> it doesn't hold up too well. But it's, it's still a really fun concept. Picture going to Disney World and you just go in one of the restaurants and then like all of the character actors are there. That's mm -hmm. kind of what House of Mouse feels like. It's yep. just everyone's there, and I think that's even like a point in the opening. It's like everyone's here or something. Yeah. Uh, yep. But it, it it's an interesting concept, and when you basically do what Disney does in at around Halloween, and tack out all the boring stuff and put the villains in. No, yeah. that, it's not boring, but the villains are amazing. Yep. I think Jafar is the one to kind of, like, start taking over the House of Mouse in this one, if I'm remembering. Yeah, he, like, hypnotizes people with a snake yeah, staff or yeah. something, right? Yeah, he does, I yeah. Think. Yeah. But yeah, I just remember it being a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. Um, the animation isn't very good in this. It's just, it's just fun to see all the Disney villains together being villains, so... Yeah, that's why this is on here, and we are going to put it, I would say, upper C, lower B. Okay, upper C, lower B. So maybe like top of C tier? Yeah. Okay. Number 25, Daffy Duck, 
Quackbusters in 1988. So I don't I don't remember if you've seen this or not. I think once, pretty much, yeah, once. Like, okay, I so don't remember much of basically, it. Basically, it's like a parody of um, Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters, yeah. Okay. With Daffy Duck. Oh boy. Um, this one is probably more adult than some of the other ones on here. Um, but, like, if you are a fan of the old uh, Looney Tunes, then I would definitely give this a watch if you've never seen it. Um, also, it's really scary. There are, there's one, like, really scary moment in this that I remember. Um, I think I remember this. Involving Tweety Bird. <laughs> um, oh, maybe I don't, I don't know if this. I'm going to squirrel that, but, um, well, basically, uh, it's like, it's, it's a fun Looney Tunes, um, it's, you know, Halloween themed, um, and there are actually some scary, scary stuff in there. Despite oh, it being um, on our not so scary tier list. Yeah. Um, also like, uh, I remember like the vampire stuff is also like, yeah, there, there's a, there's a Dracula scene with Bugs Bunny oh, as I well. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Um, but basically like the Looney Tunes, the Looney Tunes like make things scary and then like they turn things, um, kind of to, like make them not so scary. Oh, and I just remembered there is something in here even scarier than Tweety Bird that is pretty dark. So yeah, I would definitely say that this one is probably our most for adults, um, video on this list. Mm. But like... Older kids would be okay watching it. Okay. So, so be warned. Yeah, be warned, but it, it should be fun. <laughs> Alright, so where's this one going? Quack Busters. Ooh. I'm going to put this at D. Wow. Yeah, just because, like, it, it's got some adult wow. dark humor in there. Is so. it uh, worse than Corpse Bread? No. <laughs> okay. We're not getting worse than Corpse Bread. <laughs> Oh, I just, God. you could put something else at D. Um, but I still like all of these, all of these movies, let me and clarify, specials. and specials, are, are good in their own way. We're just ranking them from S to D. Based um, on what we like. Based on what we like, exactly. But they're all good, in our opinion. Yeah. Well, okay. I mean, so, all of them, though. Well, for me. Yeah. Maybe not for you. Yeah. Okay, so, moving on again. Number 26, Harry Potter 2001. Now, we're sort of lumping, are we doing, we're probably just talking about the first one here, right? Yes, we are talking yeah. about the first movie, because that is the one that is probably, well, that and maybe like the third one is probably, they're probably the most Halloween-y, right? Yeah, because the third one's got the werewolf scenes, but the yeah. first one's like, the thing is, the first two Harry Potter movies are incredible because they... Just capture that childlike wonderment uh, of magic and everything. And, you know, Harry Potter, witches and wizards and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I think it's really nice and beautiful. There's the scene in, because the, they actually have a Halloween section in this movie. Yep. And uh, in the first one. Harry Potter, <coughs> um, witches and wiz uh, wizards. It's got, you know, dark themes. It also has a, a part that is, like, yeah, the Halloween. Like the, they, they actually like have Halloween in the movie. It's great because they walk into the Great Hall and you can see that they've decorated for Halloween. They have all these, I think, floating jack lanterns instead of the regular candles in the yep. Great Hall, and it's amazing looking. They have all sorts of candy and things laid out laid out on the tables. Yes, the Halloween scene is very pretty. Um, aside from that, though, there are parts that aren't really Halloween themed. Um, but for the most part, it is like a magical, yeah. uh, you know, wizard witch movie. So that's why it's on the list. I think it's really good. I, I would still consider it a Halloween movie, despite yeah, it not it being Halloween. Halloween. Yeah. Um, but I mean, come on, how are you going to be? There's a troll in the dungeon! <laughs> and then he's just. Thrown in the dungeon! He's just like, I thought thought you don't you know. Yeah, they're trying to know. Oh, yeah. that's great. So where are we putting this? Um, uh, I have no idea. This is the one I'm kind of stumped on. Because uh, it's it's Harry Potter. It's a freaking amazing movie. Yes. But it's not 
two Halloween. Yeah, but we put Pirates of the Caribbean at the top of A tier, so surely this has to go somewhere mm -hmm. up there. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. So, Along with the mummy and pirates, yeah. Do we put it below or above pirates? Mm, it's gotta go above pirates. Ooh. Yep. We're knocking out pirate. Okay, yep. top of A tier is Harry Potter. Wow. Yep. <laughs> on our I mean, Halloween movie be. list. It has to be. Uh, All right, moving on. Number 27 is Casper the Friendly Ghost. And not the movie, Yeah. but the original TV series. And I have two episodes. I have Fright Day the 13th, 1954, or 1953. And The Friendly Ghost, 1945, which was the original and first Casper the Friendly Ghost episode. Wow. So the yeah. first Casper animation. So the very first Casper animation, 1945, and then Fright Day the 13th, 1953. Um, so the very first Casper, I absolutely love. Again, it, this is one of like the oldest in um, animation cartoons, but uh, for me, it's, I don't know, it's just, it's very whimsical, and it starts off like, ooh, do you believe in ghost stories? Well, I'm going to tell you about a ghost story whether you believe in one or not, ooh. <laughs> you best start believing in ghost stories, Caps <laughs> Casper. You are one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my much. god. So, um, and I put the first one on there because it's the first one. I, I think everyone should see the first um, Casper. Yeah. Don't watch the movies, though. No, no, the movies, they're yeah, terrible. Yeah, they're terrible. <laughs> no, we cannot yeah. unrecommend those enough. If these yeah, were, if these, not... if those movies were on this tier list, they'd be below Corpse Bride. Yeah, no. They wouldn't be on this list. Yeah. They, uh, there's there's no tier low enough for those movies. I do not like them at all. Yeah. But um, the other one, uh, Fright Day the 13th, um, that one is about a little black cat and Casper and um, basically them trying to find good luck on Friday the 13th, Aww. which is really cute. It sounds cute. It is cute. Okay. And going on to number... Wait, we didn't put Casper. Oh, where's shoot, that going? Where's it going? Oh, yeah. I'm trying to go too fast, aren't I? Hmm. All right, where's Casper? Hmm... Okay, I'm going to put him behind the Disney House of Mouse. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I, that's a lot lower than I thought you'd put it. Well, I love Casper, but it is old. Um, it is a lot older animation. Mm -hmm. um, that's really the main reason why I'm putting it so low. That's fair. Alright, so now, moving on, number 28. Phantom of the Opera 2004. This is the... This is obviously the movie version. The movie, correct. Yes. Um, I've seen this once. There's a lot of... That's a, a trend here. Yeah. Um, basically, I made this list with a little bit of your help. Yeah. But, um, I don't know. This always just screams Halloween to me. Um, I love watching it in October. Uh, it's just... It's a... It's like a... You know, it's a dark theatrical uh, film about the Phantom of the Opera like he's a phantom and then it's like it's an opera as well like it's awesome <laughs> it's, it's called the Phantom of the Opera it's, it's got a phantom and an opera it's amazing now this is not too Halloween themed um, yeah. it's probably one of the least Halloween themed on this list but it's just it, like I said it's a, it's a really good movie and I always watch it around this time of year um, it's, uh, very, like, you know, just a dark theatrical film. Um, I'm gonna say that this is also gonna go either D or lower C, just because it's not that halloween -y. Wait, you're, you, this is one you'd put in D? Mm -hmm. Like, I love the film, and the film itself is, like, amazing, um, but putting it on a Halloween list, I'm gonna say this is, like lower C to maybe D. Okay, so we can put it at the end of C, or is okay. uh, or would you put it above Little Vampire? I'll put it behind Little Vampire. Okay. 
There's so a lot of things. Seat. I'd put a bubble <laughs> Anyway. Anyway. Lower C tier for that one. Yes. All right. So then we move on to another movie. So this is number 29, and we have Hellboy 2004. <sighs> Came out the exact same year. Jesus. Yeah. Oh, my but, God. But uh, I would say Hellboy is way more Halloween-themed. <laughs> it's more Halloween-themed, and it's just generally better. I'm pretty sure <laughs> that Halloween actually happens during this movie, doesn't it? Isn't Maybe. I, I can't s- remember. I don't remember for sure, but I feel like there is... Or maybe that's the second movie. I don't remember. There was one of the movies where I feel like Halloween was going on at some point in the movie. But the point is, it's Hellboy. He's from hell. He is a yep. demon. Yep. It is awesome. The yep. movie is really good. It's directed by Guillermo del Toro, and it does an amazing job with this one and the second one. Basically, Boy from Hell, and there are a lot of uh, monsters as yes. well. It's, it's like, it's Ghostbusters if the Ghostbusters were all so ghosts. Um, also, this one is way better than the new version that came out. We definitely recommend this yeah. version of Hellboy from 2004, not the, not the yeah. new one. No, that's the important distinction. That, uh, whenever, if you hear any videos where people are talking about Hellboy and it being good, it's more than likely the Ron Perlman, Guillermo del Toro version. Ron Perlman's the actor for Hellboy, but okay. um, yeah, no. It's amazing movie. Alright, where are we playing it? Uh... I mean, it's got to go on A, right? Or do you think it's just good enough for S? Nope. No, I'm going to put it in S. Okay, so where in A? Because it's, it's not B or lower. Uh, this this is lower A. All right. Um, I'd say above Wallace and Gromit. Not above SpongeBob? Nope. Wow. Because it, it's more Halloween themed than the Family of the Opera, but it's, not, it's still not that Halloween themed. All right. It's got monsters in it. It's cool. All right, that's that's fine. That's fine. Okay, number thirty. Hey Arnold. Two episodes: The Haunted Train and Ghost Bride. Oh my god! The Haunted Train, season one, episode eight, nineteen six, uh, nineteen ninety six, and then The Ghost Bride, season five, episode twenty one, nineteen ninety six. I don't remember the Ghost Bride much, but I don't think I can forget the Ghost Train. <laughs> like, oh my god, that episode was freaking. I. Okay, Hey Arnold has this thing, and it does this. I swear, half of the episodes that have a plot through them, like, do this. But I, I'm not gonna give away the ending of it, any of either of these. But I will say that, um. <sighs> I don't know. It's pretty. They're really good ghost stories. Yes, they're and very they're, good ghost they're stories. They're basically legends told by the kids. Yes. And passed down from generation to generation. Because um, uh, his grandfather tells him the ghost train uh, story. And essentially, like, um, they literally hop on a train and it and may weird stuff. or may not. Yeah, be who knows? Things, and then, things are um, weird. The Ghost Bride is another legend that's um, been told, and in this one, there is also, like, ooh, like, it, it might be spooky, it might not be spooky, ooh. you don't really know. Um, yeah, and I, I don't... Uh, I love, uh, The Ghost Bride is probably the scariest one for me. I don't actually I, remember that one. Yeah, I, I don't know if you've I, seen Part it. of me wants to rewatch it, but here's the thing. There are a lot of these that I like. As a kid, I was terrified of. The ghost yep. train is one of them. I actually, as a kid, was scared of the ghost train. Yeah. I was, like, I was scared of the ghost ride, like, when I first watched, like, the Hey Arnold series, like, years ago. Um, the ghost ride was, like, the scariest episode of the entire Hey, Ar- hey Arnold series No, I don't doubt that. Because I, I vaguely remember being scared of the ghost ride, but I don't remember what happened today. Funny enough, there's also... I don't also want to sh- spoil it. <laughs> okay, yeah, don't. Uh, but funny enough, there's actually two other episodes that could be considered Halloween episodes from Hey yeah. Arnold. They had a lot of uh, scary legends yes. in that series, but these were the two that I liked the best, and that's why I put them on this list. Yeah. Um, so, where are we putting them? Um, I mean, you're the Hey Arnold fan. <laughs> I. Oh, uh, mm. high B for me. Um, above Winnie the Pooh? Yes. Above Coco? No. I'd say right there is good. Right. So, B, yeah, B tier. Okay. okay, number 31, Recess, oh. Terrifying Tales of Recess, Season oh. 6, Episode 1, 
2001. Oh my god. Okay, so this, literally before we made this list, I was looking through these because I wanted to make sure we could get a tier list made and, you know, yada yada. I'm looking everything up. I see Recess on here and I'm like, I thought that, okay, we, we put on The Mummy. We put on, uh... This, other stuff. This is so nostalgic for me. It's you nostalgic no for you and terrifying for me. I almost <laughs> want to just spoil the episode. No, no. But like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say the beginning part. I'm not okay. gonna say the whole episode. So, what happens is, uh, if you remember Recess, there were uh, there were these kids that were brothers, right? The Diggers. Mm -hmm. They would dig all over the playground and. Um, that was their thing, and they had tunnels and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, they come out of a tunnel one day, and they're running and screaming like crazy people. And they're like, oh god, no, it's, ah, don't go down there, blah, whatever. And then the main character's like, surely that going down there, they said not to, and they were scared, so let's do it, because that's a great idea. <laughs> and and it's, it, like, it just gets terrifying. It's like... And that's one of the stories. There are actually several stories in um, this episode. Um, it's really scary. It's one of like the it's one of the scarier things. I think so. I think list. I think generally, Just, if you're not a wuss like me, then you'll <laughs> probably be fine. Well, like it's it's scary because uh, looking back of it, at it as a child, it was scary. Yeah, and that's what most of these are. It's like uh, us looking back through a child. A childlike lens and being like, oh wow, this was really scary. Yeah. So, um, I know that you don't like this one. Nope. I mean, Recess as a show is okay, but. You can put, I, I'm gonna say you can put this at D tier. I, I mean, I wouldn't put it that low. Really? That's okay. The, here's the thing. Here's my conflict right now. The little vampire is in C <laughs> tier near the end, and every time we put something low in my head, I'm like, "This is not worse than the little vampire." Okay, put it above the little vampire then. All right, I'll, I'll do. That sounds fine. Okay. I really, I just want to knock that. <laughs> I just want to <laughs> knock it off of C tier so bad. Oh, oh my wow. god. What? Okay, so. We're at the last one. Number 32, Scooby-Doo. And it's another two episodes. Or two, two movies. Two movies. Technically. Two movies. Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island, 1998. And Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost, 1999. <sighs> okay, so... These are very reminiscent of my child. Yeah. <laughs> First off, we, got, we had to put Scooby-Doo on. It's Scooby-Doo! It's Scooby-Doo! It's Scooby-Doo! That's the whole thing! That's what <laughs> they do! They go to spooky things and make them not spooky. That's the whole theme of our list, right? Yep. Perfect. So, now, <laughs> it's funny that we say that because in the first movie, that's not what happens. <laughs> because in the first, I'm not, I don't want to get too into it, but Zombie like. Zombie Island, right? Zombie Island is good. Like, legitimately, Zombie Island is great. Uh, it's, it's a really good Halloween movie, and I think it's got just the right amount of creepy to be fun but not scary it's like it's not scary it's not it's not gonna keep you up at night it's just kind of it's just creepy it's got moments where you're like oh no and it's it's really fun especially if you watch it with a group of people i think yeah um and it's just it's all around great the, Here, yeah the witch's ghost uh we <laughs> just rewatched it and it's not as good as i originally thought it was and i think he originally thought it was yeah just because the animation in it is not that good yeah. however like the story is really good and um the characters are good the twist is good and it, i remember as a kid i loved this movie even though like the animation is kind of wonky like yeah. i loved this as a yeah. kid it's a lot of fun I um and it's a really good halloween movie I would say it's a great Halloween movie. I will say, though, that having rewatched it, I think it's... Because I was thinking, like, oh, this movie's amazing, you know? Like, mm -hmm. it's it's got it's got Tim Curry in the movie as one of the characters, and I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. But mm -hmm. the thing is, I think this, I, this movie is filled with great ideas, yeah. and they're not executed that well. It's the animation. It's yeah. Just kind of, like, it, it's, it skips... Frames kind of it's, it's it's a bit weird. It is weird. It's actually funny because we were watching it and I think we you can count 
where you can count the number of times the animation budget like shoots up where like <laughs> there are scenes where it was like oh this is where all of it went where all the budget went yeah, yeah. so uh and it's and the, the scenes they picked are appropriate because like important things are happening or they're like showing something off um but it's like it's it's not as it's definitely not as good as the first one. I would say the first one is really really good, and yeah. I think that one, like despite being a year earlier, the animation in that one was a lot better, if I remember correctly. Yep, yeah. they probably had a bigger budget on that one. Probably, um, but so yeah, I think both this? of these are really good. Are we yeah. are we trying to rate them separately or no? They're well, they're together. Okay, so um, one's really good and one is really good for Halloween. Yes, um, I I think A tier. I agree. Uh, where in A tier? I'd say above Batman. Hmm. It's Scooby Doo. It's Scooby Doo. Look, I'm not saying I'm not. I'm not arguing with you that it's above Batman. That's fine. It's Scooby Doo. I agree with you completely. Okay. I'm sitting here trying to think if it's better than Sabrina. Oh. But I that Sabrina episode's really good. But I don't know. Yeah, I'm guessing it's above Sabrina. Really? Wow. Yeah, okay, I didn't think because it's I... Scooby, and the, they're full-length movies. They're not just episodes. They're full-length movies. That's true. It's very... Well, I think they're not... They're not exactly full-length, but they're longer than episodes. They're like... Yeah. They're like hour-long specials, I want to say. The yeah. first movie might actually be feature-length. I yeah. don't remember, but the second one was only like an hour, so... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. So Witches Ghost, only like an hour. Zombie Island, full-length movie, if I remember correctly. And that's pretty much our list. Again, the, these were all movies and specials that we have personally watched. I know, like, there are way more Halloween oh my God, yes. videos so and things many. out there that are better or worse than all of these. Uh, these are just the ones that yeah. we grew up with, that we know, and that we like. Yeah, these are, I think, what the goal was, was to try and get specials you can watch as a family. Things yeah. that aren't super scary or super adult, which is... Which is pretty much why Ghostbusters isn't on here. Yeah, like we, I have a whole other list of like scary movies or adult, quote unquote, or adult movies. Like, I wanted to put like Gremlins on here. Oh my god, no, <laughs> and... no! I wanted to put Ghostbusters. She wanted to put Gremlins. Both of those were like, we're not about to. Yeah, yeah no, it, they're they're just too scary, unfortunately. Yeah, but yeah, I think this is a good list for families. Um, Definitely not toddlers, but, like, kids around, like, you know, like, ten and up, I'd say. Um, maybe eight and up. Yeah. And uh, just something that you can just sit down with a group of people and have fun. Yeah, be sure to show your kids the recess episode so they get no. nightmares. <laughs> and then show them little vampires, and then they'll get really sad. They'll be like, why did we waste our time watching that? And then show up Corpse Bride, and they're just going to be like, why do you hate me? <laughs> and then end on a happy note, watching Nightbro Before Christmas. Or Hocus Pocus, because or... those are like, those are the only S tiers we got, and they are rightfully there, because they are yeah. amazing. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Hope you all had a good time with this video. Uh, we certainly did. Oh my gosh, we were like laughing and giggling yeah, the whole time. Yeah, we went on for a really long time. Yeah. On some of it. I definitely yeah. made a lot of extra work. I was her. expecting this to be a lot shorter than what it turned out to be. You're welcome. So, yeah. Anyways, um, if you have any comments, leave them in the comment section below. If you want to share your favorite uh, Halloween special or movie, please share it with us. And I uh, hope to see you all again next time. Bye. Have a great day. Arriva Dirch! What? It's JoJo reference. Bye.